September 4. Rooms for Preparing Sacrifices. A door led from the entry room of one of the inner gateways into a side room where the meat for sacrifices was washed. On each side of this entry room were two tables where the sacrificial animals were slaughtered for the burnt offerings, sin offerings, and guilt offerings. Outside the entry room, on each side of the stairs going up to the north entrance, were two more tables. So there were eight tables in all, four inside and four outside, where the sacrifices were cut up and prepared. There were also four tables of finished stone for preparation of the burnt offerings, each 31 and a half inches square and 21 inches high. On these tables were placed the butchering knives and other implements for slaughtering the sacrificial animals. There were hooks, each three inches long, fastened to the foyer walls. The sacrificial meat was laid on the tables. Rooms for the priests. Inside the inner courtyard were two rooms, one beside the north gateway facing south, and the other beside the south gateway facing north. And the man said to me, The room beside the north inner gate is for the priests who supervise the temple maintenance. The room beside the south inner gate is for the priests in charge of the altar, the descendants of Zadok, for they alone of all the Levites may approach the Lord to minister to him. The inner courtyard and temple. Then the man measured the inner courtyard. And it was a square, 175 feet wide and 175 feet across. The altar stood in the courtyard in front of the temple. Then he brought me to the entry room of the temple. He measured the walls on either side of the opening to the entry room, and they were eight and three quarter feet thick. The entrance itself was 24 and a half feet wide, and the walls on each side of the entrance were an additional five and a quarter feet long. The entry room was 35 feet wide and 21 feet deep. There were 10 steps leading up to it, with a column on each side. After that, the man brought me into the sanctuary of the temple. He measured the walls on either side of its doorway, and they were 10 and a half feet thick. The doorway was 17 and a half feet wide, and the walls on each side of it were 8 and 3 quarter feet long. The sanctuary itself was 70 feet long. And thirty five feet wide. Then he went beyond the sanctuary into the inner room. He measured the walls on either side of its entrance, and they were three and a half feet thick. The entrance was ten and a half feet wide, and the walls on each side of the entrance were twelve and a quarter feet long. The inner room of the sanctuary was thirty five feet long and thirty five feet wide. This, he told me, is the most holy place. Then he measured the wall of the temple, and it was ten and a half feet thick. There was a row of rooms along the outside wall. Each room was seven feet wide. These side rooms were built in three levels, one above the other, with thirty rooms on each level. The supports for these side rooms rested on exterior ledges on the temple wall. They did not extend into the wall. Each level was wider than the one below it, corresponding to the narrowing of the temple wall as it rose higher. A stairway led up from the bottom level through the middle level to the top level. I saw that the temple was built on a terrace, which provided a foundation for the side rooms. This terrace was ten and a half feet high. The outer wall of the temple's side rooms was eight and three quarter feet thick. This left an open area between the side rooms and the row of rooms along the outer wall of the inner courtyard. This open area was 35 feet wide and it went all the way around the temple. Two doors opened from the side rooms into the terrace yard, which was eight and three quarter feet wide. One door faced north and the other south. A large building stood on the west, facing the temple courtyard. It was 122 and a half feet wide and 157 and a half feet long, and its walls were eight and three quarter feet thick. Then the man measured the temple, and it was 175 feet long. The courtyard around the building, including its walls, was an additional 175 feet in length. The inner courtyard to the east of the temple was also 175 feet wide. The building to the west, including its two walls, was also 175 feet wide.
The sanctuary, the inner room, and the entry room of the temple were all paneled with wood, as were the frames of the recessed windows. The inner walls of the temple were paneled with wood above and below the windows. The space above the door leading into the inner room and its walls inside and out were also paneled. All the walls were decorated with carvings of cherubim, each with two faces, and there was a carving of a palm tree between each of the cherubim. One face, that of a man, looked toward the palm tree on one side. The other face, that of a young lion, looked toward the palm tree on the other side. The figures were carved all along the inside of the temple, from the floor to the top of the walls, including the outer wall of the sanctuary. There were square columns at the entrance to the sanctuary, and the ones at the entrance of the most holy place were similar. There was an altar made of wood five and a quarter feet high and three and a half feet across. Its corners, base, and sides were all made of wood. This, the man told me, is the table that stands in the Lord's presence. Both the sanctuary and the most holy place had double doorways, each with two swinging doors. The doors leading into the sanctuary were decorated with carved cherubim and palm trees, just as on the walls, and there was a wooden roof at the front of the entry room to the temple. On both sides of the entry room were recessed windows decorated with carved palm trees. The side rooms along the outside wall also had roofs. Rooms for the Priests Then the man led me out of the temple courtyard by way of the north gateway, We entered the outer courtyard and came to a group of rooms against the north wall of the inner courtyard. This structure, whose entrance opened toward the north, was 175 feet long and 87 and a half feet wide. One block of rooms overlooked the 35-foot width of the inner courtyard. Another block of rooms looked out onto the pavement of the outer courtyard. The two blocks were built three levels high and stood across from each other. Between the two blocks of rooms ran a walkway seventeen and a half feet wide. It extended the entire 175 feet of the complex, and all the doors faced north. Each of the two upper levels of rooms was narrower than the one beneath it because the upper levels had to allow space for walkways in front of them. Since there were three levels, and they did not have supporting columns, as in the courtyards, each of the upper levels was set back from the level beneath it. There was an outer wall that separated the rooms from the outer courtyard. It was eighty-seven and a half feet long. This wall added length to the outer block of rooms, which extended for only eighty-seven and a half feet, while the inner block, the rooms toward the temple, extended for one hundred and seventy-five feet. There was an eastern entrance from the outer courtyard to these rooms. On the south side of the temple, there were two blocks of rooms just south of the inner courtyard between the temple and the outer courtyard. These rooms were arranged just like the rooms on the north. There was a walkway between the two blocks of rooms just like the complex on the north side of the temple. This complex of rooms was the same length and width as the other one, and it had the same entrances and doors. The dimensions of each were identical. So there was an entrance in the wall facing the doors of the inner block of rooms and another on the east at the end of the interior walkway. Then the man told me, These rooms that overlook the temple from the north and south are holy. Here the priests who offer sacrifices to the Lord will eat the most holy offerings. And because these rooms are holy, they will be used to store the sacred offerings, the grain offerings, sin offerings, and guilt offerings. When the priests leave the sanctuary, they must not go directly to the outer courtyard. They must first take off the clothes they wore while ministering, because these clothes are holy. They must put on other clothes before entering the parts of the building complex open to the public. When the man had finished measuring the inside of the temple area, he led me out through the east gateway to measure the entire perimeter. He measured the east side with his measuring rod, and it was 875 feet long. Then he measured the north side, and it was also 875 feet. The south side was also 875 feet, and the west side was also 875 feet. So the area was 875 feet on each side with a wall all around it to separate what was holy from what was common. The Lord's Glory Returns 
After this, the man brought me back around to the east gateway. Suddenly, the glory of the God of Israel appeared from the east. The sound of his coming was like the roar of rushing waters, and the whole landscape shone with his glory. This vision was just like the others I had seen, first by the Kebar River. And then when he came to destroy Jerusalem, I fell face down on the ground, and the glory of the Lord came into the temple through the east gateway. Then the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner courtyard, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And I heard someone speaking to me from within the temple, while the man who had been measuring stood beside me. The Lord said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne, and the place where I will rest my feet. I will live here forever among the people of Israel. They and their kings will not defile my holy name any longer by their adulterous worship of other gods or by honoring the relics of their kings who have died. They put their idol altars right next to mine with only a wall between them and me. They defiled my holy name by such detestable sin, so I consumed them in my anger. Now let them stop worshiping other gods and honoring the relics of their kings, and I will live among them forever." Son of man, describe to the people of Israel the temple I have shown you, so they will be ashamed of all their sins. Let them study its plan, and they will be ashamed of what they have done. Describe to them all the specifications of the temple, including its entrances and exits, and everything else about it. Tell them about its decrees and laws. Write down all these specifications and decrees as they watch, so they will be sure to remember and follow them. And this is the basic law of the temple, absolute holiness. The entire top of the mountain where the temple is built is holy. Yes, this is the basic law of the temple. The altar. These are the measurements of the altar. There is a gutter all around the altar, 21 inches deep and 21 inches wide, with a curb 9 inches wide around its edge. And this is the height of the altar. From the gutter, the altar rises 3 and a half feet to a lower ledge that surrounds the altar and is 21 inches wide. From the lower ledge, the altar rises 7 feet to the upper ledge that is also 21 inches wide. The top of the altar, the hearth, rises another seven feet higher, with a horn rising up from each of the four corners. The top of the altar is square, measuring 21 feet by 21 feet. The upper ledge also forms a square, measuring 24 and a half feet by 24 and a half feet, with a 21-inch gutter and a 10 and a half inch curb all around the edge. There are steps going up the east side of the altar. Then he said to me, Son of man, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. These will be the regulations for the burning of offerings and the sprinkling of blood when the altar is built. At that time, the Levitical priests of the family of Zadok, who minister before me, are to be given a young bull for a sin offering, says the Sovereign Lord. You will take some of its blood and smear it on the four horns of the altar, the four corners of the upper ledge, and the curb that runs around that ledge. This will cleanse and make atonement for the altar. Then take the young bull for the sin offering and burn it at the appointed place outside the temple area. On the second day, sacrifice as a sin offering a young male goat that has no physical defects, then cleanse and make atonement for the altar again, just as you did with the young bull. When you have finished the cleansing ceremony, offer another young bull that has no defects and a perfect ram from the flock. You are to present them to the Lord, and the priests are to sprinkle salt on them and offer them as a burnt offering to the Lord. Every day for seven days a male goat, a young bull, and a ram from the flock will be sacrificed as a sin offering. None of these animals may have physical defects of any kind. Do this each day for seven days to cleanse and make atonement for the altar, thus setting it apart for holy use. On the eighth day and on each day afterward, the priests will sacrifice on the altar the burnt offerings and peace offerings of the people. Then I will accept you. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken.